Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of CS Mentor. So today we are going to discuss how to write the introduction of a paper. So this is a fundamental section of a paper that has a lot of implication of how the paper is perceived by the readers and most importantly by the reviewers. So in this video I'm going to break it down into all the different components that make an introduction and what is the general structure and how you should write them and I'm also going to highlight what impression we want to give to the reviewer and what impressions we do not want to give to the reviewer in order to make sure that the paper is well received and also well reviewed and hopefully accepted. Before we start, if you like this content, it would be very helpful if you could subscribe to this channel and also like the video so that more students could actually benefit from watching these videos. What is an introduction and why is it important? So first of all, the introduction is the first section of the paper, gives the first impression of how good is the paper in terms of writing. So what is the quality of writing? And also what is the quality of the contribution? So how innovative and how complete is the paper? Also, the introduction sets the expectation, so it builds in the reader and in the reviewer the idea of what is about to come and why and what is the problem being studied, what are the solutions that are being developed in this paper and what are the results. Another important aspect is that the introduction highly determines the likelihood that your paper is going to be accepted or rejected. If you give a bad impression in the introduction, it's very unlikely that the reviewer is going to change his mind going on in the paper. And at the same time, you really want to give the reviewer most of the information in the introduction so that they know what to expect, they don't have doubts in their mind, and everything they expect is eventually going to be delivered. In terms of length, it may actually change, it depends on what type of venue you are submitting your paper. In general, I would say three columns is typical. So let's talk about the structure of the introduction. So you can imagine the structure as a triangle, more or less, in, that starts from something general at a higher level and slowly builds to a higher and higher level of detail in which eventually you reach to what is proposed in this paper. So your contribution, what are the results and how you're advancing science with this specific paper. Another important uh, thing to mention is that in this structure, you basically define what is the story of the paper. And this is a typical question that your advisor at some point may ask you. So what is going to be the story of this paper? And basically what the advisor is asking you is to tell me in a few short sentences, what is going to be the motivation of the paper? What are you good proposing? Why is it new compared to the state of the art? And what are the results that you are going to propose? So the introduction needs to put all these things together. And so that is why it's very important to summarize the entire paper in the introduction, because you really want to give the reviewer what to expect out of this paper. So you want to start the introduction with the description of a big problem superimposed to the specific problem that you are addressing in the paper. But this big problem is, must be something clear that many people can relate to, experts and non-experts, and also a problem that is current, that is commonly agreed to be a current challenge. Basically, what you want to do is to build the mindset of the reader and the reviewer in order to contextualize the paper in a specific area of contribution, starting from a bigger problem, then scaling it down to a more specific problem that you are addressing in the paper, and then continue the discussion. One thing that you definitely want to get out of these first couple of paragraphs in your introduction is that the reviewer agrees that this is an important problem that deserves to be studied. Second, that the problem is actually current, that it's something that we are experiencing these days. And I cannot stress enough how many papers get rejected because reviewers think that the problem that has been studied is not a problem that is worth studying now, or the problem is just not important, it's not relevant, and it's something maybe has already been solved before. Then, after you describe what is the problem that you want to study in this paper, you need to say what has been done in previous papers related to this issue, and why what has been done is not sufficient and can be improved. So basically why you need this paper. You need to summarize the state of the art, so you, you cannot write you know, a full column of state of the art, because for that there's going to be the related work section that we're going to discuss in another video. but what you want to make sure is that you guide the reader and the reviewer towards the problems that are not addressed in the current literature and that you are addressing in this paper. So what you don't want is to go off track and say, oh, this paper doesn't do this, this paper doesn't do that. 
So if you start measuring things that other people have not done, then who reads the paper starts assuming that if they have not done it, then you are going to do it. But if you also are not going to do it, you're basically providing reasons to reject your paper. And so try to make a good case for your paper compared to the state of the art. So what you want the reviewer to walk out of this section is the clear feeling that there are things missing in the state of the art and your paper is going to contribute with some new and innovative solutions. And here is exactly what you're going to discuss next. So what are your solutions? And you want to provide a sufficiently detailed description so that the reviewer and the reader can actually understand what is going on in the rest of the paper. So what are the different components? What are the techniques that are used? If you have mathematical tools, what are the mathematical tools? What are the theoretical results, etc. So also you want to say how all these different pieces are composed together. So here is a good idea generally to have an image that actually puts all these different components together and shows the construction of the technical contribution of the paper, so the flow of the technical contribution of the, of the paper. And so what you want is that the reader and the reviewer walk out of this other part of the introduction with a clear understanding of what are your technical contribution and basically how you're going to solve the problem that you stated earlier. After this, you basically describe the results, so how you're going to validate what you have proposed. So here you should have a little paragraph that says how you validate it. So do you use simulations? Do you use real experiments? Do you use some specific tools, maybe some uh, well-known simulation environments that are widely recognized in the literature? So it is kind of important to know what questions or what doubts a reader or a reviewer may have while reading the paper. And this, of course, comes with experience and it's very specific of the problem that you are addressing in the paper and so that definitely your advisor can help you with that also you want to mention if you are comparing your solutions versus other state-of-the-art solutions generally something that reviewers are going to look for and so you want to say hey we do it and we do it with the recent state-of-the-art solution we use these performance metrics and we can provide some numbers here in the introduction to show you that we actually do much better so what you want the reviewer to walk out of this section is to agree that the validation is done correctly, is sound, and is really complete. And at the same time, you are providing performance improvements compared to state-of-the-art solution. So finally, you can conclude the introduction with some optional parts. So one thing that I generally like to do is to have a bullet list of the main contributions of the paper. A few bullets, maybe three, four, that actually fix in the reader mind what are the main contributions have already previously discussed. This is a little redundant, so if you don't have much space, it's something you can remove, but I think it's good to have in order to solidify your actual contribution in few short, clear sentences. Then you can also have a paragraph that summarizes the structure of the paper. So say section two covers the related work, section three defines the problem, section four defines the solution, and so forth. So this is also optional. Some people like it, some people don't. And again, depending on space, you may decide to keep it or not. Anyway, this concludes this presentation. I hope you find it useful. Again, if you can please subscribe and like the channel, this would be helpful in order to spread this content even further. Thank you very much and see you next time.